everyone welcome or welcome back my name is Anya and today I'm gonna to be sharing with you my top 10 tips on how to survive the first two weeks with your newborn so let me just say straight off the bat that having a newborn is extremely intimidating especially if you're going from zero to one um, when you're going from one to however ever many more children you do have i think it's a little bit less daunting but going from zero to one i think is definitely a tough task and not really knowing what to expect is one of the biggest things that plays into that just dauntingness and I want to share with you some of the things that I've learned by now having two children and having gone through those first two weeks and how I implemented some things the second time around that made things a lot easier than they were for me the first time around when I, when I had no clue what I was doing. So let's get started. Number one, cleaning. It's going to be so important, especially for you women out there, to have your home feeling and looking clean but there's gonna be absolutely no time to do that it helped me out so much that I actually hired a cleaning service prior to having my baby delivered because I felt like I needed to have a clean home to bring my baby into and I was way too pregnant to get the task done so I actually researched I hired a cleaning service to come in and they did absolutely everything I'm talking about from floors to ceiling fans everything and actually the day after they were here I went into labor and I had my baby so I was able to bring my baby home a couple of days later to a very very clean home and be able to keep up with it but having that clean base to work with was just priceless so if you haven't thought about it yet and you haven't looked at looked into it I definitely advise getting some type of help with cleaning maybe you don't have to hire a cleaning service but maybe you could break it up into different days or maybe get some family members to help you out but definitely have your home clean before you go into labor so you have that peace of mind that things are going to be clean at least for those first two weeks <laughs> number two cooking definitely expect that you will not be able to do any cooking for those first two weeks so if you have to plan ahead in terms of bulk meals and freezing or if you have to plan uh you know what restaurants you're going to order out from or maybe what family members or maybe church family that are going to be you know helping you out with bringing you certain meals for those first two weeks definitely do that ahead of time because there is a lot of hunger especially if you're going to be a breastfeeding mama and there's not going to be any time to get in front of the uh, stove and actually make the meals also you spend so much time trying to figure out oh you know what do I even feel like having today da, 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 da. like no all of that is taken care of kind of going on autopilot on cooking and cleaning definitely is very very helpful so definitely make sure that prior to actually having your baby you've planned out where your meals are coming from for those first two weeks and if you can do it for even longer than that then even better number three visitors so there's two different schools of thought on this i think one a group of people that actually enjoy and really want to have many many visitors around because they feel loved and appreciated and they want to show their baby off and everything you know is like the more the merrier and then there's another group of people that are like i want to be completely shut off from the world because i don't want my baby to interact or be um, exposed to any germs during the first few weeks maybe even two months of their lives like my doctor recommends um, because it's very very dangerous for them to become sick and potentially get a fever or temperature and have to go into the hospital and run all these in very invasive tests 
So it's it's very important that you yourself know where you stand and then also get on the same page with your partner before the baby arrives. This way you could let everybody know, hey, I really do appreciate that you have all this love and affection towards me and my brand new uh, newborn, but definitely hold off on, on um, coming by to visit for a few weeks. Or maybe you could tell everybody, hey, I know people that are out there that don't want visitors, but I really want them all. So come on over, uh, come to the hospital if you want to, as long as you're happy with that that is definitely what you need to do so I know for me my doctor recommended that uh, my newborn was not exposed to any people in general for the first two uh, months of his life initially when I had my baby Sebastian this time around that I have my baby Abigail the doctor did say people are okay generally not places that are closed like a grocery store the church um but if you're going to like open places like out in the park where you're walking around there's air there's nobody breathing on her face that's fine but definitely absolutely no exposure to kids whatsoever now i have a 22 month old <laughs> So she did say he was okay, but my 22 month old does go to school. So when he comes home, we definitely do try to make sure if he is sick, we quarantine them, you know, make sure that they're not really being too close to one another and keeping her as safe as possible. So tip number three essentially is make sure you know where you stand, get on the same page with your partner and then follow through with that decision because it will give you peace in the end that actually transitions well into number four tip number four is in general get on the same page with your partner on a variety of different things that may come up i know for us at the beginning we actually did discuss that even when those areas um, that were a little bit gray that we didn't feel like we were on the same page all the time we would discuss it away from the children so definitely make sure that you are a hundred percent if that even exists <laughs> as close to a hundred percent on the same page with your with your partner because those first two weeks are so extremely stressful in every single other way and i haven't even gotten to the lack of sleep yet but that lack of sleep definitely puts you on a heightened uh, level of just irritability and you don't want that to just add on to anything that could just spark a fire and and just you know cause some type of disagreement that can turn uh, into you know both parties being upset and the baby does feel that so the baby actually gets upset himself or herself as well then mom is upset dad is upset everybody's upset definitely you know make sure to keep a level head and get on the same page on different topics that you might be having to go on and off i mean things like for example what temperature the room should be how many pieces of clothing the baby should have if this is something that like you have no problem just letting your partner have the say and, the, and take the lead on that great but the, if this is something that you both feel very passionate about and you know these were just you know trivial examples but if they are things that both of you feel very very passionate about definitely feel like you need to have the conversation early on so that you can iron out any sort of kinks before the baby arrives and that will make those first two weeks a lot more smoother so feeding the baby for those first two weeks this is very very important and i wish i had known this from the very beginning and honestly there were a lot of material that i was given the first time around that i didn't read completely i was very busy and i didn't put enough effort into actually reading through the material that would have helped me out tremendously but i'm telling you this now first two weeks of having your baby with you definitely definitely stick to the schedule of feeding them every one to three hours for those first two weeks around the clock this second time around, I've actually not gone above two and a half hours for the first two weeks. And that's because I really understood this time how important it was to not only be able to feed my child so that they are up to their birth weight as soon as possible, but also be able to establish a really solid milk supply myself. So let's say, for example, you say, 
my baby's sleeping great which they absolutely will those first few days by the way if you don't wake them up those babies can sleep until no end but they need to eat so you need to wake them up and feed them <laughs> and this will make sure that they're in good shape and you know it, it will minimize the risk of your your pediatrician saying like oh the baby's not gaining enough weight you need to supplement with formula if that's the route you want to go from the very beginning that's absolutely fine but they still need to eat regardless of wh whether it's formula or breastfeeding but if you are breastfeeding this is even more important because your body will not produce milk if you're not demanding it to produce the milk so if you're not putting your baby on your breast for over three hours at the very beginning it's not going to happen and when i say three hours i mean don't have your baby on your breast for three hours your nipples will definitely come screaming at me um, but definitely don't go longer than three hours in between feedings again i would even suggest doing two and a half max what do you do in terms of making sure that your baby is awake i'm actually going to be doing a video on tips and tricks to get that first two weeks solid breastfeeding done um, establishing a milk supply that's good enough to feed your child get them to gain the weight back and surpass it within those two weeks and also be able to start building a solid milk supply in the freezer that you can count on if there's ever a need for it the next tip is on laundry definitely don't overcomplicate things the baby is going to be living in their onesie for the first two weeks of life and even longer so don't worry about these very cute pieces of clothing and the shoes that match the hat and the little bib that no very very practically speaking the baby is going to live and be most comfortable in a onesie preferably one with a zipper that goes up and down very easily and they don't have to like wait around for you to clip and, and snap every everything or every accessory into into place definitely have a good stack of like maybe little undershirts and long sleeve long pants footed pajamas type of onesies that you could just go over and rotate through plan to do laundry twice a week i know that definitely those first two weeks you might go twice a week you might go more um, definitely give yourself the grace to be a little bit flexible around this but definitely don't feel like you have to be in the laundry room every day washing clothes it's absolutely fine to just leave a pile there if you have maybe around 10 onesies maybe 12 for a week you can do laundry twice a week and maybe if, even if you're going through two of those a day it's still enough to have you you know have a couple of days without even having to step into your laundry room things that are very important as well are bibs and uh, bird cloths these are very very helpful for a spit up um, to just you know walk around with the baby on your arm especially if you have um, all of your like if you have if you have your like tank tops on and you don't want your baby on your bare skin because it's kind of sweaty and sticky especially if you're a mom <laughs> um your hormones are all over the place those first few weeks as well so you're very hot and you're also very cold and things just are moving around very very quickly so all of that to say definitely have those very key and staple things i mean if i could give you a list i would just say this the footy pajamas the undershirt onesies that are short sleeve i would do um bird cloths and the bibs and then i would also do socks all of these things walmart by the way everything very very economic very very um just kind of even disposable your baby's going to have a lot of blowouts maybe not only in those first few weeks but throughout their first year um and you want to have the flexibility to know like hey i could very easily just do away with this whole outfit i didn't pay you know 55 dollars for the sock <laughs> i could just get rid of this little onesie this little white short sleeve onesie and not feel like i'm breaking the bank um i'm being very real and super practical with you yes i have thrown out pieces of clothing because they've gotten pooped on beyond recognition i have not been um you know like oh i need to at the beginning yes i used to wash absolutely everything stain remover on everything um brush everything now 
I'm too busy for that. I have two kids. So if there's a blowout that the poop went all the way to the neck, I am cutting that thing off of her and dumping it in the in the in the trash. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Honestly, I advise that you do the same. So this is definitely a piece of advice that I was given the very first time that I had my original baby. <laughs> I didn't have him twice or anything I just had him one time but anyway my friend said to me that one of the things he had learned was to nap every other nap so the baby is going to be napping all day long and what he advised was that I would take a nap every other nap that the baby took I think that's golden advice and if you can do it I definitely advise that you do the key for me though was that I didn't actually know which one was a nap because sometimes they nap on your arms, sometimes they nap on the swing, sometimes they nap on the um, play, uh, on the the play, what is that thing called? Snap and play? Sometimes they nap on the bouncer, sometimes they nap when you're in the car. Um, now, the first two weeks we're not going anywhere, but my point is that they're napping all day, every day. So sometimes it's a little bit difficult to be able to gauge, okay, is this the nap that I'm supposed to be napping or is it the next one? Regardless, I do suggest that you do try to get in some sleep during the day because it's the only opportunity that you're going to have to maintain a little bit of sanity throughout the night when you're also experiencing lack of sleep. At the beginning, the babies, they don't really know what in the world is day or nighttime. And definitely you can implement really good practices to, at the beginning, establish a solid foundation to let them know that this is day and this is nighttime. This has worked out very well with Abigail. Um, she's actually a little bit over a month old now. And we've definitely implemented a routine that le lets her know, okay, this is nighttime, darkness, quiet, uh, uh, bath time just happened I'm swaddled I'm in my bassinet things are, are somber that's night daytime noise light I hear my brother screaming um, you know things are moving around I'm, mo I'm being moved from here to there like daytime we've definitely established that routine I think she's taken really well to it but at the beginning they have no idea what the heck is what so definitely feel like you have the you know the the right uh to be able to take those naps sporadically throughout the day and you're gonna be taking naps at nighttime too because there is not going to be a night's sleep <laughs> for a little while um again being completely real motherhood uh having children is the best thing in the world but yes it comes at a price and that price is lack of sleep times infinity and beyond <laughs> So tip number nine is just the basic knowledge that it is going to be difficult. It's going to be hard. This is something that you're going to go through. It's a phase and you're going to pass through it. Understanding though that you're in the weeds right now and this is, you know, you're in it. There's power in that. Understanding that yes, it's hard, but it's going to be over soon. It's only a phase. So definitely come to the realization of that, accept it, embrace it, and go through it successfully. And then tip number 10 is the following. There is absolutely no such thing as spoiling a newborn. There's going to be so many people that are going to have so many advice for you on this is how you do this and this is how you do that and if you do it this way the world is going to end and if you do it that way it's going to be the best thing ever and then you do it and it's like things just went haywire and upside down listen to your gut soothe your baby carry them give them cuddles sing to them do anything and everything you need to do to make sure that the transition into this world for your baby is as smooth as possible. I know that you've heard this a million times over, but imagine the shock that these babies have gone through from being in a very comfortable position in the darkness with just soothing sounds and being perfectly taken care of. There is no hunger, there are there is no pain, there are no tears, everything is great, and all of a sudden, a boom, you're in this world. First of all, even if you went out through C-section, but if you went out through the birth canal, oh my goodness, you're like squeezed and like the trauma. <laughs> and everything that you just went through. And then you arrive here and you are in a house where people just want you to cry it out. 
don't get me wrong i do have a 22 month old there have been times of crying out but there's a time and place and a two week old that's not the time for sure definitely be there for your for your baby scoop them up if they need to the time that you're going to need to sleep will eventually come again but that time that you have to soothe and and take care of your brand new baby that will not come back so establish that connection reinforce that bond be there for them have all those cuddles and feels with your baby that time is definitely not coming back enjoy it enjoy every single second of it because no matter how hard it may seem like it is right now it's going to go by so extremely fast and you're going to be wishing you could actually be back here again very soon you know when people would actually tell me that at the beginning when i had sebastian i would say what are you talking about time goes so fast like my days I, I think that like a year has gone by and I'm still like at noon. I mean, I can't even, I don't even know what's up and what's down anymore. And I could tell you right now, 22 months into his life and now having my brand new baby girl, Abigail, and now she's over a month old, time does go by so quickly. Embrace it, love it, savor it. Every single moment is worth so much with these tiny little beings that are trusted on us. Enjoy it. Don't let it go by in vain. So thank you so much for watching. I really hope this video was helpful for you. If it was, please give me a like and leave me a comment below. I would love to start a conversation with you. If you have any tips and tricks that we could implement, definitely let us know. I will see you in my next video. Bye.